Hey what's up everyone, my name is Andrew and in this video we have Xbox 360e or the last model released from the 360 series. This console was bought by my friend a while ago. Actually my friend got it from a cousin and he got it from some friends. So many hands this console has passed. And fast forward, they ask me can I check it, do something from it. But the problem is, we don't know is this console working or not. So I got a Xbox only, no power brick, no controller and no disc. However, I know some guys that are working with your stuff, so I ask them to find me some power brick and a controller. And a day after, I pick up the boat, I mean I have borrowed the boat, just to test the Xbox. I connect the Xbox to my monitor, I connect the power brick and I start the Xbox. Fortunately, the Xbox started just normally which I didn't really hope. And I have to be nearby if something goes wrong to disconnect the power. So the Xbox is working. It's a little bit loud, but nothing special. And some very unpleasant smells started coming out. The temperatures are okay, but the temperatures are on the upper border. I pair the controller with no problems and the range is good. I mean, no connection problems. The USB ports are also fine. I try connecting my keyboard, the 3.5mm audio jack is also fine and everything else. Well, when I check and I solve that everything is fine, let's move to disassembling. Disassembling this Xbox series isn't much complicated, except for two things, opening the back side of the case and removing the heatsink holder. If you try opening the case, may sound like you'll break it, but it just sounds like that. The back side has three plastic clips, but to the right side the clips are opposite. So this is the place and the step that requests more attention and more careful work. And yes, it may take some time until you open the case. So let's continue with the rest of the hardware. And here everything is much pretty easier than the opening the case. And this is the other harder thing to remove, the heatsink holder. So here I'm using something soft to protect the motherboard and I'm gonna use flathead screwdriver. Now I will place the screwdriver between the holder and the heatsink and I will twist to release the clamps. 
also this is another step that requests more attention and more careful work. If the screwdriver slides away, it may damage the motherboard. That's something that nobody wanna happen. Well, and the Xbox is done, but let's take the CD-ROM. And the disassembling is finished. And now let's move to the cleaning. So first I will start with cleaning the motherboard, removing the old thermal paste, dusting off and etc. Also to clean the electronics I'm using soft brushes, cotton buds, 96% isopropyl alcohol and compressed air. Well, and I'm done with cleaning the Xbox and the other parts from the console. But now let's move to the controller and the power brick. The controller has 7 screws from the bottom side. 6 of them are clearly visible, but the last screw is hidden under the batteries and under the sticker. The controller in general is clean. There is a small amount of dust and a little bit nasty around the keys, which is very expected, but nothing too much as knows to be. But however, again, I have done in detail cleaning, removing all the dust, cleaning the contacts and etc. And the last thing is the power brick. To open the power brick it's very simple. From the bottom side under the rubber feet are 4 long screws. And basically that's all. Probably you will ask why I'm opening the power brick. So from the inside the power brick has a small cooling fan. Sometimes this cooling fan is full of dust and that's why sometimes the power brick gets very hot. 
Everybody's paying attention to the console, the controller, but really who care where the power brick will be placed. So for any case, I always do check the power brick, in case if I need to clean it or do something other. So the cooling fan is not much dusty as I expected, but again, I clean it and I check it. After you clean the power brick, I return all the parts. And basically we are done with the power brick. And this is all about cleaning the electronics. Now let's clean the plastics. Because of the next modification, I will wash all the plastics using warm water and dish soap. This process mostly have done it in a bathroom and this is just to show you what I've done. After washing, the plastics are clean and there is no hidden dust and the plastics are ready for the next step. And the next step is making some mods to fix the scratches all over the case. So I asked my friend if they have some mod requests and I got an answer. Can I do something nice and simple, but also something unique? First, I prepare the Xbox for painting. And first I protect some parts using a paper tape. After I finish with paper tape, I took my scalpel and I removed the Xbox logo from the CD-ROM plastic. I removed these small metal letters because I cannot protect them using tape or something else. Simply these letters are too tiny and it's easier to remove it than protect it with something. After I finished with all prepares, I took Made the Black Spray and I paint some parts only. The paint looks fine and very refreshed. But now it's time to fix the shiny plastic. And here I'm gonna use a very specific vinyl. This is a chameleon type vinyl with glitters. So the spectrum here goes from made black to shades of blue to shades of purple and shades of golden. Actually this vinyl always look different seen from a different side and looks different under a different light. Also something like this mostly is used on supercars or racing cars, but now it's on this Xbox. Well, and let's see how this look. Looking from one side, we have a made black. From the other side, some shades of blue. From other side, shades of purple. And if you look closer, we will see tiny glitters. These glitters make the vinyl looks different under a different light. The shade will change in the morning, in the noon and the sunset. So actually this is predicted for cars, but it's gonna be great on this Xbox also. And when everything is done, let's move to assemble the Xbox and all other things.
and we're almost done. But still, something is missing. I mean the disc. So I got a disc from the same guys from where I borrowed the controller and the power brick. And except the disc, they give me one disc cover, which I totally didn't expect. Actually I planned to make this cover from a plastic and then using magnets to fix it on the case. Already have done something like that and it's perfectly fine. By the way, to some places like this, I'm using small neodymium magnets. Usually I'm taking the magnets out from a broken laptops. These magnets are around the screen or the bezel or these magnets can be found in a dead hard disks from a laptop or desktop computer. However, now we have an original part and it's looking much better. And as finish, I pull some games that I keep in my collection, mostly a favorite on this console, like Battlefield 3, GTA 5, GTA 4, The Witcher. Actually, I don't have a lot of games for the Xbox 360. Right now, I have eight only in my collection. So now I continue with installing the games and doing all the tests. And after we made all these changes, this is the final result. So what I wanna hang with my friends, so what I wanna go out again, so what I wanna write you a song, it's not my fault that you can't sing alone. I try to keep it cool and be ways, I try to stay away from mistakes. I'm making my way and I'm good on my own, skipping the show cause it's all that I know. It goes like And a few words more about this Xbox 360e. This console slowly becoming old, but still this is a great gaming console. The games can be found for a cheap and the games are widely available. And as well, additional replacement parts are coming at a low price. The controller, the power brick and the disc cost me about a 30 euros, which is nothing compared with other newer consoles. Also, I really like this model because have a lot of USB ports, HDMI port and as well has a 3.5mm audio jack. So if you use a PC monitor without speakers, then you can connect speakers and the audio quality is just great. Well, and this is all about this Xbox 360e with a simple mod. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to back in function some older touch and make it usable again. Also, if you like my channel and my work, you can press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.